Hey, here we are. Oh, hello. What's going uh, on? Welcome. Welcome to you, Eric. Welcome to all the people watching. I'm excited for today. It's going to be a good one. This is Untapped's virtual happy hour. If you don't know who I am, I am your host, Kenny Gould. I am the founder of Hop Culture Magazine and the creative director at Untapped. Um, what are you drinking now? That is the question of the day. I want to know what you are drinking. Uh, Eric, what are you drinking? Yo, I'm drinking a Black and Beautiful beer right now from Ingenious. Um, it's great. It's 10%. It's salted caramel, dark chocolate, and it's it's beautiful, baby. It's beautiful. Cheers. Love it. Cheers. Oh. I got a fragment of Merit, little session IPA from Southern Grist. Uh, and we want to hear what you're drinking. So go ahead, subscribe to the Untapped YouTube channel, comment with what you're drinking, because uh, I like seeing what other people are drinking out there. I'd love to know. I'd love to know. All right. And who are you, Eric? I just introduced myself. But who Yo, my name's Eric E-Money E-Caps A-O Caps. Um, I run Uncap Everything, which is an advertising and marketing brand. Um, also journal, beer journal, beer writing. Um, I also own Capsule, Co oh, what's on the other side? Capsule Collective, um, which is a uh, Richmond-based craft beer uh, magazine that merges craft and culture. Um, so yeah, I'm super glad to be on uh, with you tonight, Kenny. Good to see you again. Thank you. Um, do we have, we have any special announcements today before we get- Absolutely, yeah, but for those of you that like beer festivals, we've got a great one for you, it's coming up. Um, it is Hop Culture Juicy Brews 420 Fest. That's right. Digital Craft Beer Festival. It's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be a great time, and I love how Hop Culture is doing it. Um, so it's gonna be 10 amazing beers shipped directly to your home. That's a lot of beer, man. It's a lot of beer. That's a lot of beer, but you know, it's gonna be a great time. Um, and then on April 25th, we'll have a day of digital programming. Um, it's going to feature a lot of uh, speakers, workshops, and more. All content will be recorded. So if you can't attend that day, you can watch it afterwards. So all you got to do to purchase your ticket, listen, is go to hopculture.com backslash 420. That's great. It's going to it's gonna be a great time. I can't wait. I'm going to be there. And I'm going to say hi to everybody. Oh, I get it because it's a four digital four. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Enough with the cannabis puns. Today we have a very special guest for you. I first heard about Chelsea White through a mutual friend. Yes. And I started following uh, her on Instagram. And once I did that, I was like, we got to get Chelsea White on the show because on Instagram, Chelsea White is known as Chell Sweets, and she has over 1 million followers because she bakes incredible cakes. It's amazing. Uh, amazing. White is a certified cake influencer. Can we call her a cake serone? A cake serone. A cake serone. <laughs> yeah. Like a cicerone, but like, like a cicerone, but a cake serone. Or like a it. cake molly A. I love it. I love yeah. It. I'm, I'm there for it. Um, well, uh, she's made a very special cake for us, which we want to show you. Uh, you're going to see it and then stick around because after you see the cake, uh, you might see a cake that I made. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from New York, New York, Chelsea White, a.k.a. Chelsea Sweets, a.k.a. the queen of cakes. Let's check out her video. Cool. That cake was gorgeous. Gorgeous. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. You guys yeah. really hyped me up. I also like that cake, cake sommelier. That's what I, or cake, cake sommelier. Mm. I gotta start calling myself. Yeah. <laughs> Put that in your IG bio. Yeah. <laughs> Are you drinking anything tonight? 
I am. I am drinking the brewer's beer, or so I'm told. I'm being really classy with just, just a Miller Lite. Miller Lite. Yes, Miller Lite. Well, oh. cheers to you. Thanks for being here. Yes, I'm um, so excited. That was an awesome cupcake you made. Was that a, a cupcake? What would you classify that as? I always struggle with that, and I, I sometimes say they're cupcake cakes, but I think it can be really whatever you want it to be. Great. And when I asked you to make a beer cupcake, how do you go about conceptualizing something like that? What, what What's the thought process? Walk us through that. Because I'm sure you get a lot of weird requests to make special cakes. Do you draw it out first? Like, what do you, how's it work? So if it's more, if it's a larger or like more detailed cake, I will draw it out just so I can get kind of like a visual idea of how I want it to look. Um, but for something smaller like this, I really just kind of think in terms of like cartoons, if that makes sense. So for this, I just kind of pictured like an ima or a, not imaginary, a cartoon beer sign with some nice little foam on it. And then of course I wanted to make it a little extra. So I added some edible glitter, but um, that's kind of how my brain works. I think for most things. And you made a little handle too. I did. I did. Beautiful. Thank you. Yep. Handle. Yep. Kenny, I heard a rumor that you might have made a special something special for today too. Is that true? It is true. I spent the entire afternoon baking uh, per the recipe that you sent me. <laughs> uh, I'm a little embarrassed by it because I just saw your video and it was awesome. <laughs> uh, but I'll show you my video. You want to see it? I absolutely. Yeah, yeah let's see it. it. All right. Buckle in, ladies and gentlemen, because you're about to see my take on the Chell Sweets beer mug cake. All right, so it looks Gosh. like the first thing you need here is just some cake mix. It can be any cake mix. And all you need after that is three fourths of a cup of water, three large eggs, and seven tablespoons of softened butter. Nice. <laughs> Your oven looks pretty nice. Yeah. It's the standard oven. Water. You think that's standard until you live in New York and you have a gas oven. <laughs> You're totally right. It's the standard Pittsburgh oven. Butter. That's it. You didn't even use an electric okay, mixer? So I'm impressed. Apparently, it actually is pretty important you use a mixer. And like not a fork or your hands because <laughs> oh my gosh. it's mostly pretty gross. Oh, no. The easiest yeah. way to make cupcakes is in a little dish like this. I if realized. you want, you can go ahead and Hey, there's Pam. Or every store sells these little liners and they do the exact same thing. Once you have appropriately mixed your batter, you can go ahead and Dole out cupcake mix. Looks pretty good. Got a little messy. Could work on my form, but working with what I had. I like these filming angles. You like you really got into this. On the timer. Yeah, I did. I did get it. <laughs> While we're waiting for our cupcakes to cool, I just want to say. This is a recipe for anyone. I am barely hanging on on a good day, and I'm doing this. I'm making these, and you can too. There's a lot of cat hair on me. I don't know if you saw that, but. So once your cupcakes are done cooling, they should be pretty easy to remove. At that point, you can carefully Unwrap the cupcake and if it has this little head, you just want to go ahead. Oh, see, he's trying to off. do like you where you spent it around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I added this step, Chelsea. You didn't tell me that step. I was going to say, I'm impressed, that but that was a good idea. Right that that would have been hard to make middle. with that. This is the part where we make our frosting. Now, a lot of stores don't sell beer mug colored frosting, so I put white <laughs> frosting, and then I have a few different food colorings that I'm gonna use to really get the color I want. Looks promising. Oh yeah, wait till you see this color. Look at that. 
Now we get to the fun part. What you want to do is place a little dollop of icing right on the plate there. You're going to take one half of your cupcake, just press that into the icing, and that's actually going to hold it in place. And put some icing in the middle. And on Are you using a butter knife? I am using a butter knife. <laughs> That, that was the wow. tool. That was the tools I had to use the yellow. It's good. Stuff. It's good. It looks good. I had a fork and a butter knife in that spatula. <laughs> Once your sides are smooth, you're ready to start applying the foam. Then, if you want to get really fancy with it, what you can do is get a little cocoa powder. I'm using the toothpick of a Swiss Army knife here. I, I didn't have a paintbrush like you. That's okay. And you can give your beer some lines here. That's actually working really well. It wasn't bad. It wasn't I'm very bad. impressed. It wasn't bad. Nailed it. <laughs> I think you totally Good nailed job. it. That's, that's pretty cool. Bravo. It didn't look quite like that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's easier with a spinning cake stand. Let's be real. Ah, get in <laughs> I there. Had the I had to take the bite. Get in there. Yep, yep, yep. That was cool. That, that was great. That was awesome. I approve. That was my cupcake. <laughs> uh, did I mess up anywhere? Was it, was, it, was it okay? I think you get an A for effort, an A for end results, an A for taste, it looks like. So, I mean, I would say all around, A+. plus. I love 2021 when you can just get your effort, you get your sticker. It's great. Uh, when I was a kid, that you didn't get that. Um, these are new times, right? These they are. are. Yeah. Hey, right. uh, I am curious, Chelsea. How did you become what you are? Cake. This is your full time thing, right? You, you're making cakes now. It is. Yep. That's such a cool thing, and it's so. Obscure. When you were a kid, did you think like, this is what I'm going to grow up and do? No, I, I actually didn't bake at all growing up. Like literally your extent of baking the box cupcakes was my extent of baking until I was 22. So no, that was never like a goal or a life dream or even a thought in the back of my mind. How did it, how, what happened? Walk us through this. I'm so curious now. Um, it's not the most, I think people think it's going to be this amazing story and it's very straightforward, but I was working, I went to school to be an accountant. So I got my CPA and I was working in public accounting in New York city and the hours are just like really long and pretty terrible. And I would get home from night, home from work at night after staring at Excel, like literally all day. And I would just need something else, like some type of creative outlet, some way to unwind. And I started baking. Like the first thing I made was a batch of cookies and I just like loved how it felt I liked eating them. I liked the whole process. It really just like felt so incredible to me. And so I kind of like spiraled out of control from there. I made one of my friends a birthday cake that was like the ugliest cake you'll ever see in your life. Like lopsided, <laughs> like didn't know how to smooth frost. Like if you really scroll far enough on my Insta, you'll see it. Really? <laughs> it's not worth the time though, but it's in there and it's pretty hilarious. But uh, I, it just, I didn't, I would, number one, I was very proud of that first cake. Number two, I just like loved being in the kitchen and like doing something different than sitting at a computer all day. Um, so I eventually got better at making cakes Then my friends started ordering cakes. Then I started making videos of cakes and putting them on Instagram. And then that just led to a lot of growth. Um, I think mostly just cause videos, I started making videos in 2016 and that was kind of like back when videos, it sounds crazy now cause everything is videos, but yeah, that was when videos yeah. were becoming a thing. So like you could just make like a pretty average video and it would get like double the views of your follower count and it led to so much growth. And so it really just like snowballed out of control there. Then I started kind of working with the Food Network to help create um, social content for them. And then I started blogging and then I started doing partnerships and I kind of realized that you can make so much more money in the content space versus like actually trying to sell custom cakes. <laughs> then I started like just, you know, I started my YouTube channel and everything and uh, it got to a point where like I was making like double my salary, my corporate salary um, with Chelsea stuff and I couldn't keep up with all of it. So I decided it was finally time to like make yeah, it up. Yeah, that's so awesome. I did, yeah. That's amazing, that's amazing. Now, but it's talk, a long gradual story. <laughs> talk to me about Food Network. Um, did they contact you or did you get in touch with them? How did that relationship? 
happened. Very funny. So um, one of my friends texted me in like 2016 and was like, Chelsea, did you know you're on Food Network Snapchat? And I was like, what? <laughs> and they wrote like a Snapchat article featuring me and I didn't know it was getting published. And ironically, back then I was Chelsea's NYC because Chelsea's was taken. Huh. And they actually misquoted my handle as Chelsea's. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. Like sad that it's not my proper handle. Like, and I was like, I wonder if that person still has that handle. So then I went and checked and they had like abandoned it. So that actually Food Network misquoting my handle is what led to me getting like the real Chelsea's Instagram. That's so. cool. <laughs> That's really cool. You know, yeah. somebody has hop culture met hop culture and they've never they posted one post and it's like I don't know what it is. I think it might be like a burrito or something. <laughs> uh and they did it years ago. Um and they that's haven't shame. Since, but that's why we became hop culture mag, um, which ended up working out. But mm -hmm. that's why none of our handles are hop culture, they're all hop culture mag because it was taken. Um no, hard world out there. How often do you do like custom cakes for um, people or do you do that anymore? Or do you just kind of work so, on content? I haven't sold a cake since 2017. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'll make them for like friends or family. But to be honest, like all of my family, family lives on the West Coast and a lot of my friends have left the city now. So I mostly just like make cakes for fun and for content now. Where do the cakes go after that? That's what I want to know. Well, I Where do they go? Where do they go? <laughs> It's the number one question I get asked. Um, it used to be so much easier when I had my day job because I would just like cut them up into giant Tupperware tubs and bring them into my office and yeah. it would just be gone in like an hour. It was amazing, it was fantastic. It got harder once I started working from home but I could still like drop them off um, at like friends places nearby or neighbors or friends offices. Uh, but then COVID happened and then that got so much harder. Um, so I've been like mailing my family some cake and like oh, trying to wow. pawn it off on whoever I can, but it's yeah. become like so much harder. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Do you, uh, we're starting to get some great questions. Yeah. I see Ed Emerson just posted one. I'm gonna get that one up in a bit, but I'll just say to everyone watching, if you do have a question, feel free to drop it in the comments and uh, we'll be getting to them. Um, do you remember the day that you decided to leave your corporate job and go into, baking full time. What was what was that like? If you remember? Uh, I do remember that that was like a very big day. So like I kind of hinted towards earlier, I really kept doing both jobs until like it was physically impossible. Like I think I, in hindsight, I think I could have quit like a year or two earlier. And I, I wish I had but I'm a really cautious person. Mm -hmm. So I think I just like really wanted everything to be in place. But I was talking I took a day off of work to film something with um, refinery 29. And um, a fellow content creator slash friend, Lucy Fink, and she does like lifestyle stuff. And she was talking about how she was going to go full time next year and like quit her job at Refinery. And then she was like, why aren't you doing the same thing? Like you're in the same situation I am. And I like paused and like took a step back and like reassessed my situation. And like I had set these like kind of ridiculous goals for myself of like, oh, when that happens, I'll quit my job. And like I didn't think it ever would happen. And I had this like epiphany where I was like, oh my gosh, like I've got, I've met all my goals. Like everything is ready to go. Like, let's do this. So then I like, it was like a light went off in my head and I was like eagerly, I was as patient as possible because I had to wait till after the holidays to put in my like notice at work. But um, I was so ready to go once I decided. That's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. That's so cool. Um, all right. I'm going to get this question up from Ed because it's a cool one. Um, all right. When pairing a beer with a cake, uh, would you recommend a similar tasting beer or a contrasting beer? Uh, how do you, I don't know, have you ever thought about pairing beer with cake or, or <laughs> what would you do? I, such a great question. To be totally honest, a lot of times I will drink a beer while I'm making a cake, especially if I'm like working late. Like if I ever have to work on something past eight and I'm in the kitchen, I'm always drinking a beer. But I usually use, this is like also too much baker lingo, but I almost always use American buttercream, which is like really sweet. It's like kind of like that frosting you think of like as a kid eating on your birthday cake that is delicious, but it's so sweet. It almost makes your teeth hurt. Yeah, you love it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I use that frosting a lot and it's my favorite. Um, but with that in mind, like I really actually like drinking like bitter IPAs. 
Um, and sometimes I'll drink like a, you know, like a fruity sour or something if I'm feeling sassy or it's the summer. But for the most part this winter with like every cake that I've made and eaten, I've been drinking just like, you know, a, like a double IPA or uh, something kind of along those lines. So I, I'm sure I could be more technical with like the flavor pairing. <laughs> um, but I think that something like less sweet goes really well with like any of my cakes because they are so sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a great answer. Do you have any favorite breweries in New York or things that you really enjoy um, in the city? I really like Kings County, KB, yes, KCB, yeah. yes. KCBC. I, yeah. I feel like every beer that I've tried of theirs is really good. I also like Decadent Ale. They make a lot of like, they're, I think up in Westchester, but they make a lot of like des dessert beers, like we were talking about earlier, like, you know, like orange creamsicle or just like really out there flavors that are really fun. Um, so I really enjoy drinking both of those. We Both of those breweries were at our last digital festival, actually. Uh, nice. We did a collab with Decadent. It was a French toast IPA, which was yes. So <laughs> <laughs> they make like the coolest flavors. It's really fun. <laughs> have you been down to KCBC? I have not, no. You have to make the trip. Um, the neighborhood, just the art in the neighborhood is so awesome. Some of the street art. And then um, KCBC, their artist is a, a comic artist primarily. And he also does cans for them. So I think they have some of the best art in like the, the entire industry. Um, I totally agree. I feel like every time I walk into like a beer store, I, I am a sucker for a good label. I think yeah. we all are. Yeah, yeah. But that's like how I first started trying their beers because I was like, oh my gosh, that label is so cool. Now <laughs> I'm pretty terrible, but <laughs> I don't know about I don't know if like cake is now your job and so you don't play in the dessert space anymore. But are there do you have any favorite bakeries or or as a as a dessert professional? Um, are there any places either in New York City or, or in other cities that you visited that you're really excited about right now? There are a handful of bakeries in New York that I really love. Um, I think they just make great stuff and I, I don't eat dessert out that often because I do eat it all the time in my kitchen. Right. But if I'm ordering for someone's birthday or, you know, something I am out and I want something sweet. I love, um, Billy's Bakery. It's downtown. I think they might have two locations now. I think they might have West Village and like downtown somewhere but i love billy's bakery i love um little red hen it's on the upper east side and they make a really good blackout cupcake mm. um those are my two favorites and then i do like magnolia banana pudding which is like so cliche and everybody goes there but there's a reason why it's so good and i really like their flavored banana puddings too so mm -hmm. i would say those are my favorites awesome Spe now, speaking, oh, yeah. speaking of favorites i'm curious to know like out of all the cakes that you've baked and mm -hmm. I, you know, I was scrolling through your page. I love the creations. I love the little, the, the animals. I saw some bunnies. I saw some frogs. I saw snowmen. I saw South Park, which was really cool. Like what's been, yeah. <laughs> what's been like your favorite uh, cake creation or, or character that you, that you've baked that, you um, that kind of comes to mind. My very favorite, this is like the inner child in me coming out, but I love SpongeBob as well. I love like Family Guy. I, I saw I that one. Like, yeah, I like cartoons. So I would say I made a SpongeBob cake and a Patrick cake, and I think the Patrick cake actually is my favorite cake I've ever made because I had like a matching T-shirt, and I just like so was so funny. happy when I made it, and I still like look back at it. It always yeah, makes yeah. me smile. So I yeah, say that's yeah, probably yeah. one of my favorite cakes. That's really cool. What about most challenging? Ooh, beer cup. Um, <laughs> Most challenging. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably my wedding cake, to be honest. And like, it was really fun to make and like really awesome. But just it was like a little bit stressful. I planned ahead. Don't worry. And I made it in advance. I did everything I could to like make it as stress free as possible. But just like the transporting that oh my to gosh. my wedding venue yeah. the morning of my wedding, and there was like ice on the stairs. I had to walk. No! Through, like, I feel the anxiousness now. <laughs> it was and everybody was like, let me help you carry it. And I was like, no one's touching this cake. So I made it like this for myself. Wow. Um, but that, that would be the most stressful That's thing. cool. Thank you. That's, That's cool. like a brewer making beer for their own wedding, which I imagine would be really meaningful, but also really stressful. So what kind of cake was it? What, what are we talking here? 
It was every, it was four tiers. All of them were funfetti because cool. it's my favorite cake flavor and my husband's. And then we just did vanilla buttercream to keep things. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, now for, for people out there who might, you know, be on Instagram or even YouTube, um, you mentioned that you kind of got into the game very early on, which helped. Um, are there things that you're doing now to continue growing your platform that you found to be really effective or um, as somebody with, you know, a million plus followers on both platforms, if I'm not mistaken, I think is YouTube, YouTube's bigger than Instagram. No, it's, it's not. It's a lot. Though. You're hyping me up. Um, yeah. My YouTube is like 250 or something, but on TikTok, <laughs> I actually have 2 million. All right. TikTok actually, actually 2 million, 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 so get it right. 2 Woo! million. All right. Two million. TikTok. Wow. But I mean, I think that like the most important thing I will okay. I think there's like two or three <laughs> things that are really helpful. Number one is just like, sorry, I'm adjusting my earbud. Um, video is king. So like, it's much easier to take photos and everything. But like, if you really want to grow and like reach new audiences, like video is what's going to give you that reach, that vi virality. But I mean, you have to be making like decent quality videos. But like, videos are so the way to go if you want to grow. I think the other thing is that if you're gonna like want to have a social media presence and try to grow uh just make sure it's something you really love or you really enjoy because it takes I'm, as you guys know it takes so much energy so much time yeah. so much strategy and you, you just need to let like you can tell when you yeah. look at somebody's page and they really love what they're doing like it sh it shows in their work so i think it's just you really have to find something that uh, it sounds cliche to you but like that you're passionate about but like it's really important to yeah. like have that base feeling to like get you through everything that it takes to be successful in that space. That's awesome. That's great advice. Now, when you mentioned video, you said TikTok is actually your your biggest following and it's a pretty new platform. Mm -hmm. um, is that where you see the most potential for growth or do you still think, you know, creating um, video content for some of the more traditional platforms like Instagram or YouTube is still going to be effective for you? I think that it really just like each platform is its like own world. And, and I mean, I know people now post like TikToks to IG Reels. So there's like overlap in terms of content. Mm -hmm. But just like the audiences are so different. The content is so different. So I mean, I think that there's still, you know, different types of content to be made for every different platform which is just great for people like us so we have more things to do um but to be honest like partnerships are still so much uh more frequent and higher paying on instagram than TikTok. So even though TikTok is a great space and there is a lot of room for growth with the virality of their algorithm like if you're a content creator and you're trying to make it a career like it's harder to make money on there even with the creator funds than it is doing like partnerships and things like that on uh YouTube and more conventional social media platforms. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. Business model, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell that my CPA is showing? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we got another great question from Ed. I actually had these same questions, so I'm going to throw it up here. Um, have you ever baked beer in one of your cakes or used beer as an ingredient in one of your cakes? I have. So earlier when you asked me about my process and like how I con conceptualized my beer mug cake, I did think about it that way. But I also cheated because like four years ago, I made a beer mug cake for the Food Network and it was like a full size cake. It was actually pretty tall. It was cool. <laughs> but it's I, number one, I like share that like rights with Food Network and um, it's just like filmed in less good quality video. So I didn't want to share it for this. Um, well, I'm glad. But, you didn't because then I would have had to make that and that was hard enough. Yeah, no, <laughs> so. I think I think the mini was perfect for this. Um, but in that cake, I did use, I think, a lager, just like a very standard lo like lager that I got from the grocery store. Yeah. So it was nothing too crazy. I actually tried making a beer reduction to pour into my syrup because frosting, you can't add too much liquid or else it can break because of the uh, fat and the butter. So mm -hmm. I tried like making beer syrup, essentially. And it was like one of the grossest smelling things I've ever done in my life. So the frosting was just regular frosting, but there was beer in the cake. And also I've made like a Guinness chocolate cake before, but that's not. Yeah, quite somebody asked that too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Jason Marks. Anyone else? Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm not saying words. Anyone else have leftover Guinness cake from yesterday? Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Belated. Um, I don't. No, I don't. I didn't have any. I had Guinness though. Definitely had Guinness. Did you? Nice. 
yeah, none of us do apparently. Awesome. Well, Chelsea, if people want to find you, uh, where can they do that? Where's the best place to keep in touch and learn more about what you're doing? I always say you can find me on your favorite social media platforms, wherever that may be. But my handle is Chelsea's across everything. So if you are curious if I'm on a platform, I most likely am. And you can look that up and find me. I also share all of my recipes on my blog which is chelsweets.com. Um, so if you feel adventurous like Kenny and you want to make something exciting, you can head over there and check it out. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to share? Any new projects or cool stuff people should check out? Um, I have a few projects that I'm brewing up, no pun intended, um, but I can't, I can't share them yet. So you'll see them in the next month, but I can't talk about them sadly. Well, I, I know where to find you on my favorite social media platform. Uh, <laughs> I'll keep looking there. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, cheers to you. Cheers. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great night and uh, yeah. we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thanks so much for having you guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was cool. Who has a sweet tooth now? This Me. guy. I've always yeah. had one, but that's just, sweet tooth. Yeah. it's kind of like when you are hungry and you go to the store and you're yep. hungry yep. and you buy everything. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. That was so cool. No, that was cool. Uh, beer, like straight up beer people. It's cool. Yeah. It's a new take on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm Hop Culture Ken on Instagram. Eric is Uncap. Uncap everything. Uh, give us a follow. Check us out. Um, what else? Subscribe. Hope you had a good time. Yeah. Subscribe, subscribe like, follow, email. share, comment, do all the good stuff. All the good stuff. We will be back in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, I believe. I uh, got a really cool guest coming for you, so stay tuned for that. And uh, without anything else, Eric? I don't have anything. I want to know what you're going to do with the rest of those cupcakes, though. I'm going to eat them all. I'm hungry. You should <laughs> share them with me. You should, should share them with me. I'll mail a couple of Richmond for you. Please. All right, text me your address. Okay. <laughs> I will, I will. <laughs> all right. Uh, to all you at home, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yep. Yeah, bye. See ya.